And this is our second day of actually checking traps. So we've got 10 in the ground and we're, this is, um, it's probably about 150 acre track. So we've, uh, seems like a lot of traps, um, but there's a lot of little intersections and all out here and we've been seeing that sign. So we're, we're just trying to cover our basis just to try and um, show you what a coyote looks like in a MB550 leg hold trap. You know what, I'm sitting there looking at a critter in a trap right now. And um, we just pulled up here to the gate and it looks like we have got one. And we're fixing to go down here and show you what that looks like. All right, so we did have something in the trap this morning and do have something in the trap this morning. And before we even got the gator unloaded here, we went down there and peeked to, to see what we had. And it is not a coyote. So, um, so with that, uh, we got a little bit of a lesson here that uh, we get to show you this morning because it is not fur bearer season. So we can only catch and uh, kill coyotes this morning. So we're fixing to give you a little lesson. And that is one beautiful, very upset bobcat. And as I've already reminded you, it is March the something, 10th -ish. Somewhere along in there, yeah. But the big message there is it is not fur bear season. So that means that he's gonna get a free pass today. Meaning that Mr. Lynn <laughs> has to let him go, right? So gotta let all fur bears go outside of fur bear season, right? Yeah, while I'm getting my catch stick, Brad, why don't you go in and pet him on the head? Woo, he is certainly upset. So we are certainly ready for you to show us how to turn him loose. You have to carry a catch pole with you? Yes. That is the law. The law, that's right. And he nooses him up by the, by the neck there and he uses his feet to open the jaws of the trap. Takes him away and look at there. And he's loose. And there he goes. That's all it is to it. So it, I, I would, no, I don't know this. We hadn't talked about this. I would say you've done that a few times before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not my first pony yep. show. Yep. So, um, so this is, this brings us actually to another whole topic. So we've caught an animal here that wasn't our target animal. Um, so are you just going to set this thing back or? I will. I'll do it on the way back out. Okay. So the scent's not going to mess you up no, or? Absolutely not. Okay. Just so. It'll help. Okay. Just puts more critter scent in here and um, I Remember think Remember what I told you about brush that they can reach? Yes. Yeah. Yep. He tore that thing to pieces, didn't he? Yep. Yep. Another quick little tutorial here that Mr. Lynn just shared with me. We've been talking this week and um, of course he's a big fan of the MB550s which are so, so popular with trappers for coyotes and well, bobcats, foxes, all that stuff. So, but what works for him and what he's a fan of are they have what's called offset jaws which don't close all the way and then they've got i don't even know what they call closed jaws which do close all the way and standard, trap. standard traps okay and so he's a fan and what works for him now this is again just works for him is the jaws that are just standard and they close all the way and he showed me something just a minute ago why he, his personal preference is that and i'm gonna i'm gonna turn this thing around and we're going i'm gonna show you what he's talking about okay this was a cool example right here so tell me what you're talking about here this is the mb550 offset and you do have some of those oh yeah yeah, yeah. and i use them yep yeah that's about a quarter of an inch right gap between them right right and in the past i've had situations where a small very small pebble was caught between the two jaws as it closed and what that can cause this is, is a cool. gap like that mm, which a lot of critters can find enough strength and pull to get out of and the pebble it's caught in is no bigger than the slug of a 22 bullet right and a fox or bobcat can pull right out of that thing yeah, and then probably even the coyote if yep. you could get enough so, snatch on it yeah yeah and they're hard enough to catch anyway so <laughs> yeah. so why not yeah just yep. uh get every advantage that you can so that's a great little lesson on just what your personal preference and why you prefer them that's so that's right got no problem with the other guys who use them all the time and i use them 
Yeah. But I prefer the standard trail. Yep. If you had to pick one over the other, it would be the standard. Yes, and, and that's why. Exactly. That's good. Pulling up on some more traps down here in the power line. Don't see hopping and jumping. Don't see any hopping and jumping down there. This. Now this was a set that I really liked yesterday. I'm talking about pretty, pretty, pretty. But I don't see anything hopping in it either. But, as we always do, you, you gonna check them? Yeah, I wanna make sure nothing's disturbed it. Making sure we didn't have a bird move a rock or anything like that. Exactly the way we left it. So we're gonna leave it alone and ride. Okay. That right there can be a lesson. Trappers and people who want to learn how to travel need to understand up front there's going to be days when you're going to run every track you got and catch absolutely nothing. You just better be prepared for that because it's going to happen. You're not going to succeed every day. Just be prepared to deal with it. Don't get discouraged, you just told me. Exactly. Never get discouraged. Pulling up on another trap here with nothing in it. But we will just make sure that the trap wasn't tampered with or a deer didn't step in it or anything like that. And it looks the same. No change. No change. All right, next. It looks like an undisturbed trap to me. Yep. Still looks good though. Student set looks good. There's my teacher right there. Now you see how you can see the pan? Yep. Dry, it's dry. Oh yeah. That's because you got air on it from that fiber. And it's that's so, actually a good it thing. Yeah, it insulates it, yeah. That'll make it fire quicker. The dry dirt right there, thin layer dirt. So the fiber from the pillow dries it. Insulates. Okay. Huh, is that a little digging? Or or just kind of... Looks like maybe where a mouse kind of scratched around a little bit. I mean, he hadn't, yeah. just hadn't done any damage. He hadn't even pulled out the sheep's wool, just a little... No. Just In that case right there, you just leave it alone? Or oh, yeah. Nothing. It'll dry out during the day. That's yep. just where you disturb the dry dirt. You see some of the damp dirt under yeah. it. I guess the later in the spring and summer you deal with more mice and all that kind of mess, don't you? The biggest problem in the summertime, not only the mice, but ants. Ah, they yeah, get in ants. that... Yeah, terrible. Get in that bait hole, huh? Yep. And here we go up to our last set for the morning. And it's empty as well. And it looks completely undisturbed, doesn't it? We're real fortunate. See that deer track? Ah, yeah, <laughs> boy. Walked up in, sniffed it. Yep. Well, you were telling me something on the gator a little bit ago. We got 10 traps out, and I tell you, I'll be honest with you, I'm 100% confident that if coyotes come, came through here and had any curiosity last night, that we'd have one in the trap. So, oh, I'm sure of that, yeah. Yeah, so tell me what you're talking about, about this is just part of it and don't get discouraged. And yeah, I mean, coyotes, they hunt, and sometimes they hunt in groups and pairs, and some, a lot of times just alone. And they travel, but they don't travel in the same area every night. It might be three or four days, sometimes even a week. I have had traps out on a, on a two week trapping job and catch a cow the last day on a, in a trap that I set the first day. If you can understand what I'm saying, 13 yeah. days later. Without even messing with the trap or... I never relured it, nothing, absolutely yeah. nothing. Yeah. In, in a perfect world, in a perfect situation, um, you would love to trap for about 14 straight days for a coyote, right? Exactly, because it sometimes it takes that long for the pack to come back through. I mean, they just, they got the whole world to hunt in and they have their areas that they like best and they will hit those more than will others. Right. And, uh, sometimes it takes 
three or four, like I said, three or four days, sometimes maybe even 10 to 12 days before they come back through the same area. Okay, so we had, we just had a good conversation about this, and this is something folks may be wanting to know about how you <laughs> quote unquote dye your traps. Because um, you have to dye and wax them or, or do some kind of uh, treatment to them before you set these in the ground, but you don't use the commercial dye anymore, do you? No, sir. Well, I, I've never heard um, the, the way you do it. I've never heard that. I'm going to try it. So tell folks what you how you prepare your traps. The off season, when I've got no jobs going on, I will go to Lowe's, Home Depot, Ace Hardware, anywhere, get you a cheap gallon of black flat black enamel paint. One gallon's all I use, according to how many traps you got. I, I dye one trap at a time. And with that gallon of paint, I pour it in a six inch PVC pipe. It's got a cap on the bottom. I pour that paint down in that PVC pipe and I pour one half gallon of paint thinner in there with it. Stir it up, thin it, makes it real thin. It keeps the paint from being gummy on your trap. And I'll take each trap one at a time, chain and all. I use a hook, of course. Let it down in there. Let it set for four or five seconds. Take it back out. I got a special place that I hang them so they can drip dry. And just a week or two, all the paint smell, everything's gone. Then after they're good and prepared and painted, I'll do the same thing using wax. And my wax is right at the boiling point, but not boiling. And I'll dip them one at a time down in there, same way, four, five, six seconds, take it back out. Normally, <clears throat> my traps, when I dip, dip them in there, they start to, you can see bubbles and boiling. And when that stops, that's when you take it out because the metal has reached the same temperature as the wax. And you're gonna have some wax build up on your traps. You wanna after everything cools down, you want to put your gloves on, take each trap, open it up, scrape all the excess wax off the jaws, and then set it, set the trap, and trip it, and uh, let it slam shut. That makes everything start working right. Uh, on these MBs, I got a night latch, and you can you can hear it click when you ease down on the pad. Oh. You want to take a rat tail, not a rat tail file, but a flat file, a real small one, and clean the wax out of that latch on the trigger, on the pan, and on the lat, the trigger itself, because wax will build up on it. And if you try to set your nap night latch without doing that, sometimes it'll slip right over the top of it and fire. And you don't want it to fire uh, without an animal being, you know, causing it. How long in between your your uh, paint treatment and the wax? You say a couple of weeks? Well, it's cool how much time you got. At least a, a, a week, but I would wait at least two weeks. If you can, okay, yeah. okay. And then we, after you get them done waxed, um, I, I usually store mine in like a Tupperware thing during the off season. Or how do you store In your fact, traps? To be honest with you, mine, I put them in five gallon, I put a dozen in a five gallon bucket and then another dozen, another five gallon bucket and, and take those buckets and put them in my shop, in my trapping shed. <clears throat> and sometimes I'll even put green pine straw on top of them and uh, just to, and they stay dry. There's nothing in that that's gonna absorb the odor, mm -hmm. you know, that's gonna cause them to absorb odors. Just... I keep them out of the weather. Now I'll leave them outside for two or three weeks to do away with all this odor that I've, you know, caused by painting them and such as that. But to me, it works as good, if not better, than any of the commercial uh, dyes and wax. Yep. And again, we're back to what works for you. Yeah. All right. Time to bait the dirt hole. And I was quizzing Mr. Lynn earlier about you know, and like we've talked about on a perfect 14 day set. How often do you rebate? How often do you relure? How often do you 
uh, put more red fox urine in your bait on top of your bait hole that kind of stuff so and there he goes with the sheep's wool so um, this is actually a set here that we um, caught the bobcat on uh, this morning but uh, so we do have to redo everything on it because um, it was tore that <laughs> cat had it tore up pretty good but um, just kind of on another note let's say this is a brand new set right here and you're coming along and you're putting your lure in and um, so you you um, you were telling me you don't do a whole lot of freshening up no once that oat is there disturbing everything is not going to make the odor go away the odor is going to stay there see, see. Uh, even if you catch an animal his odor is going to be there and the odor you put there is going to be there it's, it's just another something to attract them so that little now, stick I, go ahead I do use a little bit when I have to redo a set completely I do use new uh, sheep's wool and one little dab of, of uh, gland lure and I might even spray a little more urine on it, but you don't really need to because there was a cat caught here. I'm going to put red fox urine, just another attractant. I don't think you can put too much, and having said that, you don't want to waste it, so it doesn't take a lot. All of this stuff costs. You have to, have to purchase your tools, your equipment. And anywhere you can save a dime, you need to do that. So let's say that this set right here goes, you know, we're going to, let's just say we're going to set for two weeks or four, yeah, 14 days. Um, you know, assuming that the set doesn't get disturbed or anything like that. So you wouldn't come back and add bait or lure or anything. No, sir. Okay. No point in it. It's there. So, and it'll you know, hold. After a period of time, three or four or five weeks, it may be gone. But uh, like I said earlier, I've caught coyotes on the 14th day, where previous to that, 13 days previous to that, there was no visits or activity around the set whatsoever with the original uh, gland lure. I never redid anything. So the combination of the sheep wool helping hold the, the scent and the power of the lure or bait, whatever you're using, is uh, there's no need to come in and freshen up. So even after a rain, you don't need to do that. Nope. I didn't. So, and it's worked for you. Yep. All right. So, just made our loop through the property, and um, of course we had the the bobcat up here at the front, and um, no coyotes. And uh, but so what uh, Mr. Lenz decided to do is, uh, in fact, you can see him back there. Maybe hear him even hammering. Is um, uh, there, there's another area that he wants to set a trap just to kind of up the odds a little bit and then this trap that he's setting behind us here is actually straight across from where we just released the bobcat so a lot seems to be some activity in this area so we wanted to kind of double up on it all right day number two of checking traps in the book and um you know more good information or i thought anyway so my takeaway for today was that so many times I've been frustrated or disappointed or lacked confidence in my set if, you know, I go a number of days and I don't catch anything. And so I'm, the natural response to me is just add some more bait or add some more lure. Maybe the lure doesn't smell like it did the first day or whatever. And I've done that. And not necessarily that it hurt anything, he said, but it's not needed. Trust your lure, trust your bait, trust the urine that you put behind the dirt hole. And if I've got a guy who's been trapping for 50 years, who is trusting lure, even through some rains for two weeks, that's a pretty big takeaway for me. So. Um, just trust in the holding power of that. What did he say? Ken Nugent, one call, that's all. That's that's a good way to look at it. So that's all you need. Assuming that the set doesn't get disturbed or bothered or you catch something, then then that's all you need to do is just hit it one time and, and, uh, and let it ride. Another takeaway, and I may have already talked about this somewhere on the video, I don't know, but every single set that he has set 
and we're specifically targeting coyotes now. Every single set has been with red fox urine. In fact, he even said, yeah, I've got some coyote urine. I've used, I use it. It's, I've got some, but it's at home. I didn't even bring it with me. So, and he's out here with a geo, geo in crew trying to catch a coyote for an article and for video. And he's like, I, all I need is, is, uh, is red fox urine. So carries it, carries it in that little plastic, uh, soap container, which tells me he buys it in the big gallon sizes. So, um, red fox urine, coyote cult time. If you're going to try to get an entry in and if it were me, I would be for my urine on my backing, I would be using red fox urine exclusively just red fox urine.